sends this signal from the computer to the projector. If you're connecting to the desktop computer, you only need to connect this cable one time to the back of the computer. If you're connecting it to a laptop, you'll need to reconnect the cord anytime you bring your laptop from home back to school. The second cord you need to connect is the USB cord. The USB cord is the same cord that you would see at the end of a mouse or at the end of a keyboard. Just remember, the interactive whiteboard is just a huge mouse pad. When you're plugging this in, you just plug the USB cord into a USB port, either on the side of your laptop or on the, on the back of your computer. Again, if you're using a desktop computer, you only need to plug this one time and leave it permanently plugged in. If you're using a laptop, anytime you disconnect the computer, just be sure that you reconnect the USB cord. Depending on what type of Promethean board you're using, some boards use the USB cord to actually power the actual Promethean board. A lot of troubleshooting too occurs when people don't plug in their USB cords, and the number one culprit is forgetting to plug in the cord. Now, depending on what school you're at too, you might have to plug in an Ethernet cable. This is going to give you allow you to access the internet then from your computer and display what's on the internet to your interactive whiteboard. If your school is wireless or you have wireless technology in your classroom, then this cord is not needed and you don't have to worry about any extra cables. Just remember again the three cords that you might need to connect. One is the VGA cable, two the USB cord, and three the Ethernet cable if your school does not have wireless technology. Now that your cords are all connected to your computer, the next step is to install the software on your computer. Once you've installed the software successfully on your computer, the next step is to calibrate your board. You may notice that the first time you use the pen tool on the computer, that the cursor and the mouse is not in the same location that when you, when you tap the actual interactive whiteboard. To make sure that the mouse is in the same location of the board when you tap on it, you need to calibrate your board. To calibrate the interactive whiteboard, you're going to take the pen, which can be found on the side of the interactive whiteboard, and you're going to hover right above the light, which can be found on the top left-hand corner of the interactive whiteboard. Depending on which board that you have, you hover over the light, it may change either to a red color or to a blue color. Again, just hover over the light for about three to four seconds. In three to four seconds, you're going to see that it's going to beep, and your screen is going to give you directions. It's going to tell you to please tap the screen to begin. So you just tap the screen, it doesn't matter where. And then you're going to get another message in the top corner here that says, please click in the middle of the barrel to activate the screen. You just take your pen tool, tap the very center of the barrel, and then another barrel will appear on the right side of the screen. Again, tap the middle of the barrel. Continue doing this until you've clicked on the middle of the, all five of the barrels. Once you've clicked in the middle of all five barrels, You'll notice now your board is activated. When you use the pen tool on the actual board, it'll be in the same place, that the, the cursor will be in the same place as the mouse tool. And any time that you wish to control the board or to interact with the whiteboard, you'll need to use the active pen. The active pens are usually stored or housed on the side of the interactive whiteboard. Depending on which type of board you have will also depend on the type of pen you can use. If you have one of the older interactive whiteboards, one of the original ones, your pen will look like this one down below on the left-hand side. It's a light gray color with an, orange, with an orange stripe. The board usually comes with two sets of pens, and you can only use one pen at the board at a time. If you have the newer board, which is the Active 500 Pro or, or newer, your will have two sets of pens that come with your board. It doesn't matter which pen is at the board, both pens will do the exact same thing. One is called the teacher pen and one is called the student pen. If you activate dual user mode, both pens can touch the board at the same time. Now, if you have an older board, which uses this pen right here on the left, you can upgrade your board to two pens like this. This will also give you the ability so that two students can touch the interactive whiteboard at the same time. 
Now, using the pens on the board is identical to using a mouse that's connected to your computer. Anytime you want to click on something using a mouse, you usually take your left finger and you just click the button. You do the same thing with the pen tool. You just take in your pen and tap it to the board. Anytime that you wish to move an object on a, on a um, screen, usually you take your finger on the left uh, mouse key, you click and hold, and you move your mouse around. To do the same thing with the pen, you just take your pen, you just tap it to the board and hold, and then move the pen around the screen. As you move your pen around the screen, you should start to hear a scratching noise. If you're using your board correctly, you should hear actually a large scratching noise. Typically, when students use the board, they're very intimidated by the sound that they use when making with the board. Again, the louder the scratch, the more appropriate the board is going to be. One of the biggest problems I've had in my classroom is students are not putting enough pressure to the board. The board itself is made of a very durable and formable surface, and it will not be hurt and it cannot be scratched. Even though the pens, though they look different, they all act the same way. Depending on which pen that you have, again, you can tap it, you can touch the board, you can click. If ever you need to do a right click on the board, you just simply hover over the board, press the barrel button, and then tap the screen. But to be totally honest, though, I don't think I've ever used a right click using the pen. If anything in the active board or in the active software needs to be done in a right click, I generally go back to my computer and 